Hey guys, finally sleeps here. With all these AI matches and a big campaign and we have seasons coming in FIFA Mobile 21, I think we're going to see a lot more AI matches. And with those AI matches, we always have um, the things like the requirements, uh, braces, scoring goals with defenders, scoring goals with midfielders, what formations work, what doesn't, how, what actually is a dribble. How do you score goals with defenders when you don't have an opportunity for corners? That's what we're going to talk about right now. How do you set up your teams to be able to meet all these requirements and hopefully make your way through these AI matches much easier? Before we get started, though, make sure you like, comment, uh, share, subscribe, follow along here at YouTube. Make sure you turn on notifications. Check out FinallySleeps.com and don't forget to watch the live streams on Twitch. Okay, so let's talk about this. To get right into it, so if you look at the Tiago or the Zayek match, which is the last match in the preseason, the third act of the third book, it says we need to score a goal with defenders and score a brace. First thing, what is a brace? A brace is just two goals, two goals from the same player. So you need to find a target. You pick that target. Once you get a first goal, look for that target for the second goal. A hat trick, three goals. Simple, we should know that. Um, defender, okay, there's two strategies to be able to score that goal with a defender. The first strategy, look for a corner, have a power header guy in the back of your squad, or stack your team. So let's take a look at stacking the team too. If we go into a team where we have to score with midfield, if you have only midfield as your priority, then build a squad that's got five across the middle. You can use a four-five-one. Um, you can do flat. You can do anything you want, but load the midfield heavily. Put all of your finishers in the midfield. Now, if you don't have to score a goal with the attack and it's only midfield, then set a passing guru that is not a finisher up top at striker. That does two things. That gets rid of the um, expectation of finding the striker because your midfielder up top, if he's not quick and he doesn't have uh, fast attacking runs, he's going to settle in and play it like a nine. So if you only have midfield goal requirements, stack your midfield, settle in your striker with a midfielder or even a defender if it works out. I've even used bronze players up there just to make sure that everybody in the middle is making the runs and nobody else is. If you need a defender, if the squad requires a defender goal, you have two options. You can either load the back with a player that's going to have be able to finish your corners, get rid of anybody in the back that's not a corner master, put long shot guys up top, take your shots quickly, look to earn corners to finish your headers. Or you can go with a five back formation we'll just find one so we've got where's my favorite five two one two because it's almost got wings okay so if you take a player that you feel confident that you can dribble down the field with put them as your wing backs you can always carry down and score the goal with those here's how it works if it says it has to be a midfielder then even though Daglish is a striker, he's in the midfield. That makes him a midfielder. Salah, even though he's a wing, he's in the defensive line. That means a goal scored with the Salah would be a goal scored by a defender. The other tactic you can do is run the game all the way out to your... If it's got a tiebreaker for extra time... Use that opportunity to get into the extra time and go all the way to the end for the opportunity for penalty kicks. If you need to score a goal with a defender and you've got a defender that is in your lineup for penalty kicks and a score scold in the penalty kicks, that works just great. So if you look back here, we have tiebreaker none, tiebreaker extra time and penalties. That's another option. If you can get into extra time and penalties, use the penalties to score those goals with the position specific players you need. Let's take a look at Thiago Silva. 
because this requirements right here, we have three goals using midfielders, score a hat trick, and 10 dribbles. Let's talk about the dribbles because that's another thing that there's a lot of confusion about. A dribble is a completed run past a player on the other team. So I've added the dribble count so you can see how it works because it's not exactly what you think. So we passed that outside midfielder and that was the first dribble. Every time you pass a player, don't have to just dribble past him. You don't have to roulette around him. You just have to overtake him on the field. It doesn't matter if he's right next door to you or 20 yards away. As soon as you dribble past a player. So here we go. We're going to, there's five and six because we dribbled past the left mid. Then we dribbled past the center back. So we're all the way up to eight because you're overtaking those players. Now, if you dribble past a player and you lose possession of the ball, the dribble doesn't count. So if you get into a situation where you're struggling to get your dribbles in, what you can do is settle into the back of the field, pass back to a defender, dribble forward, pass their striker, then pass back to another defender, dribble forward, pass their striker, pass back to another, and just piggyback those dribbles right there in the back. It's an easy way to do it. And when I say dribble past the, the striker, you can the striker can be in the middle of the field. You can send it to your right back. The right back can dribble up. As long as he overtakes that player on the field, you're still gaining access to that dribble. doesn't have to be right next to the player. It just has to be overtake them on the field. Don't lose possession. Either finish, take the shot on target, or complete the pass. And you still gain access. You still gain um, the count for that dribble. So we're going to let this play out, see how the dribble count goes, see how close we are. The other requirement that people talk about is tackles. And that one usually sucks because it you're playing it on a game where it should be an easy win. And you're constantly having to give the ball to the other team so that you can tackle and win the ball back. The best strategy for winning the ball back on a tackle when you have a match like that where the other team is not up to par with what you're playing with is kick the ball out, send a through ball, send the ball out, give the other team the throw, back off, let them receive it. As soon as the ball touches the other player's feet, come in hard for a tackle. And just repeat that over and over and over again. If you still struggle to give the ball to the other team, shoot from anywhere. Get the ball downfield, send a through ball, shoot something so that you can win it back. Now, tackles do count if they're a slide tackle. They count if it's a foul. As long as it is a tackle, as long as you are going in hard on the player and you either steal possession of the ball or send the ball out, it still counts as a tackle. So like on this game, let's see, we're all the way up to dribble count 12. Again, it's only about dribbling past a player, so 13. We didn't necessarily roulette around him, but we overtook him on the field. 15. There we go, because we overtook two midfielders. Now, we're not going to get any credit for this one because we lost possession of the pass, and there it is. Dribble count 15. Let's see. There you go. 15 dribbles. That's all it takes. So now if we look at the Zayak match, it says you have to score a brace, and one has to be used with a defender. Tactic for, team, for games like this, when you have to use a defender is go in with a back line that is going to finish corners. So right now on this one, I've got the Tiago from the last match and Van Dyke in the middle. I'm going to look for an opportunity to get into a corner. So all of my shots are going to come from outside the box. I'm looking for an opportunity to score, first of all, because I need a couple of goals. I need a brace. And I'm looking for the keeper to just take a touch and get it off onto a corner. It's much easier to, to win a header off of a corner than it is to try to dribble a defender all the way up the field. So if we can get the ball downfield, get an opportunity for a long shot, that's where it comes from. Now the other requirements that you have for stuff like this is you have hat tricks, which is just one player for three goals. Uh, if you're playing in a hat trick match, immediately get your first goal in, look for that target, Take your shot with him as quick as you can, and 
always try to find him on the field. Look for that opportunity to grab as many players from midfield, push them forward. And if you're struggling to get the same player in, find out what position in your formation is gaining access to the ball more than anybody else. Shift your fastest, strongest striker over to that position so that that player, it becomes your new target. Don't be afraid to put stuff out of position. Remember, chemistry means nothing in these matches. Your OVR doesn't mean a whole lot either. I mean, your stats and your speed and stuff does make a difference. But as far as being able to beat a 130 OVR team, you can beat a 130 OVR team with an 85 pacey team. OVR does not matter in head-to-head -head near as much as it does in versus because the problem with versus is your chances are based on your OVR. Head-to-head -head means nothing like that. Don't be afraid to throw stuff out of position. Don't be afraid to throw in program players, especially anybody that you've earned in the existing current program. It does make a difference. It does make things much easier. So we've talked about the brace. We've talked about the hat trick. We've talked about um, scoring with midfielders, scoring with defenders. This is all about finding a target. So here we go. We won our corner. We're just looking for Van Dyke. And of course, we can't get a corner off of him. We earn another one, which is another issue. Handicapping. You're going to get used to it. These matches are not straight up matches. They are handicapped. The harder the level of the match, if it's an expert level, a hard level, uh, extreme level, the matches are handicapped, which means that sometimes when you send a pass, that pass is not going to go in. Finally. Finally. Van Dyke with a goal off a corner. You send a pass in, it's not going to work. If you're dribbling, your player may step on the ball. It's like they're just having a bad day. That is a scripted match with some handicapping. Get used to it. It's just part of the game. And here's the last thing I want to talk about is passing. If you have a passing requirement, the one thing you can do is get the ball in the back of the field, pass it back and forth, slow the game down, look for defenders, look for the goalie, back and forth, back and forth. Once you gain all your other requirements, that way your passing stats can come through. I think that's it. That's all the requirements that I know of. That doesn't mean we're not going to see new requirements in the next season. Uh, but for now, make sure you pay attention to FIFA Mobile 21 and what comes out. We have seasons coming. There are going to be a lot of matches. There's going to be a lot of requirements. If you get stuck, remember this. 4-5-1, best formation for midfield goals. Go with a 4-2-4 if you have to have multiple attacking goals because, of course, you have four attackers up top. 4-5-1 because you have five midfielders across the back. Be reluctant to go for the five-back formation and try to dribble your defenders all the way down unless you have somebody that is so far outmatched on everybody else. It is very difficult to throw a right wing in, an out, in a wing-back position and dribble through the entire the team because of the scripting. That's it. Make sure you follow along on um, YouTube. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and share. Don't forget to turn on notifications. Check out the Discord here. We've got discord.finallysleeps.com is the Twitch mobile Discord where you can talk to me, Ruben, all the other streamers, and then discordapp.com invite FM. That is the big foot mobile Discord, the Reddit server. Check it out. Uh, you can find anything you need to know about FIFA Mobile there. Uh, come say hi to me in the Partners channel. I think that's it. FIFA Mobile 21, right around the corner. Hope this helps you as the season goes along and all the way out throughout next year.